Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of reflecting telescopes and refracting telescopes. Okay, so reflectors are like the Cassegrain system where I have a lovely dish, a parabolic dish, which um, the information comes, it's sort of a reflector surface, the information comes in, it gets reflected off and goes for an eyepiece. Whereas uh, refractors are things like the normal adjustment. So two lenses and light comes in, it is refracted, and then comes out of the other end. So what I'm going to do is firstly I'm going to talk about problems with refractors because in the world of astronomy, reflectors are always favoured over refractors. And the reason why is because refractors have quite a few issues with them. Okay, so th the first problem with refractors is that they suffer through something called chromatic aberration. And chromatic aberration is this. It's all to do with the fact that if you could think about it, before we even go to lenses, if you stuck a lovely piece of glass, had white light going through it, you get the spectrum out of it. And that's what happens. If I draw my lens here, okay, I have white light coming in. Yes, it's represented by the black line. But then it starts diffracting outwards. So what happens is you get this. Sorry about that. What happens is the colours get split up. And this means is that your image, your colours of your image, are not meeting at the same point. This means you get a blur, a distortion with the colour, which is why it's called chromatic aberration. And this only happens because there are lenses. The fact that there's two lenses increases this even more. Okay, another issue that refractors can suffer with is spherical aberration. And it's all to do with this lens. If this lens is not perfectly parabolic, you don't get this really nice focal point. So if I just draw this here. Okay. This is not perfectly parabolic. What happens is you get this. They don't all meet on the principal axis here. And it's all because unless this is parabolic, you do not get them all meeting at one, converging at one point. So you don't get a clear image. And this can end up with a sort of fuzzy image. Lenses are quite typical to survive from, uh, suffer from chromatic aberration, but reflectors can as well. If the mirror at the back is not perfectly parabolic, it can suffer from spherical aberration. Another con of refractors is they're heavy. We have glass. Glass is heavy. And if you've got it on the end of the... Um, thing here, the end of the thing, if it's really big, it can cause warping and distortion of the actual telescope, which can of course affect the image. So heavy lenses can cause distortion. Okay, and warping of telescope. The last thing uh, a refractor, one of the problems with refractors, of course, is the cost. They're expensive. Two massive pieces of glass, okay. To actually get a decent magnification, you either want a massive objective length, focal length, or a very, very small eyepiece focal length. Both of these have their problems. If you want a very, very big focal length, for the objective lens, you need a very, 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 very big lens. 
If you want a very small eyepiece focal length, you need a very, very small lens. This, of course, is going to cause a lot of cost because to manufacture, to have very good focal lengths and still be able to use them is very difficult. So this is why they become very expensive. So for large magnification, you either need a very high FO or a very small FE. Okay. Now, reflectors, on the other hand, are light and cheap, especially today. All you need is a shiny surface to reflect off of. Now, the best reflectors are things like the James Webb Telescope, and they can cost a lot of money because they, are, they want the best reflection, the smoothest surface. But the light thing is useful. This means if I want to move it around, or if I want to angle it all over the place, it's much easier to do, okay? As I mentioned before, a con is it can suffer spherical aberration. if the mirror itself is not parabolic, okay? So reflectors are light and cheap, does not suffer chromatic, okay? And also it doesn't stuff, because it's light, it doesn't distort, the, the material itself doesn't warp, okay? Now, what's the point in having a refractor? A refractor, the design is just very simple. Just two lenses, okay? You can find the focal length of those quite easily and you can make a telescope very easily. So refractors are some of the most simplest to set up. But because they're glass, because they're heavy, because they suffer all these aberrations, they are not very good for astronomy. Not past beginner, we're talking about proper astronomy for physical for, for physics usage, okay? So that there are the pros and cons of refractors and refractive telescopes. And a little bit more information about the two types of aberration that can happen. The chromatic aberration, which is all to do with the wavelength, and spherical aberration, which is all to do with the fact that the lens or the mirror is not a perfect parabolic shape, which causes when the, um, the rays come in, them not to be out of focus. So there we go, pros and cons of reflectors and refractors.